So we're very pleased. We're glad you made it. Ole is uh, here to share with us today. Thank you, Jim. It's an honor to be here. Um, now, get ready for the real accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, now, yes, I, I came from the Soviet Union, and uh, Jim mentioned the Voice of America uh, that was broadcasting in different Eastern European languages uh, uh, the uh, alternative news, and I was one of the listeners. And we found ways the government was jamming those voices. There was uh, uh, Radio Free Europe, there was the German Wave, there was Voice of America, there was a BBC, a Russian service, and it wasn't as leftist as it is now. Uh, not the Russian service, but the BBC. <laughs> and um, uh, we were listening to many of those, and sometimes the government was jamming those uh, radio voices, and we were sometimes even recording them on the tape recorder, and then comparing different versions with friends, uh, and if those uh, sentences were jammed at different times, then uh, we could compile and put together a more continuous uh, segment, uh, especially with that for music programs, because as, as you may, have, may know, uh, rock and roll music was not very welcomed by the Communist Party, and we all listened to rock and roll, and the BBC and the Russian service had really good uh, music programs, and that's what we recorded and tape. But uh, also we got some political messages with that. So uh, now I'm here, and uh, I'm writing The People's Cube. It's a satirical website that uh, parodies the left. Uh, we got to pretend to be, it's a game, uh, like a role-playing game. Pretend to be the Stalinist Politburo discussing current events from this uh, hardline communist point of view. And uh, a lot of Americans uh, like that. Some don't understand what we're doing, but we have a uh, pretty good following. Uh, now, one of uh, our leaders is a military uh, an army officer who sent me a screenshot uh, recently uh, showing that. Uh, my website, the People's Cube, is banned on uh, the Department of Defense computers under the category of hate and racism. Now, um, and I understand that the DOD employees have better things to do with their time uh, than to read silly websites. Uh, if the category was goofy and silly, I would understand. But the category was hate and racism, and that's a completely different uh, matter. Uh, now, uh, that is so false, that accusation. I won't even waste your time explaining why it's false, but uh, I, a little later I'll tell you how I was able to beat that block and have it removed. And that's a relevant story to, to the, today's debate. Now, when I lived in the Soviet Union, uh, my speech was expected to be blocked. And it was a default setting. Uh, there was nothing I could do about the Soviet government. Uh, I was, uh, I didn't believe in socialism and collectivism, and so uh, I was doomed to silence, and like I said, there was nothing to do. But uh, I had assumed at the time that if I were to move to the United States, uh, I would have the freedom of speech and expression, and uh, I would be able to speak without censorship. Now, imagine my surprise. Uh, I found out that many in this country uh, including in education and uh, even in the government, love the ideas of socialism and collectivism that I had escaped from. Uh, so I began to satirize the left again, and this time in English, and uh, I launched uh, the People's Cube. That was in 2005. Already in 2006, uh, the People's Cube was banned by Google. Uh, we were removed from uh, their search results. Uh, they, the ranking went to zero, and uh, we had a big fight about it. Uh, the pretense was uh, ridiculous, uh, but I don't have time to go uh, deep into this. Since then, the site has been uh, blacklisted, shadow banned, suspended, downranked, and otherwise hindered uh, from all directions. Uh, we've been purged from Wikipedia. That was a very ugly fight, and long, and uh, depressing. Um, again, some other time I may tell the story, and it's also very relevant uh, to this discussion, but Wikipedia is a whole different matter. It's completely uh, unobjective, and it is filled with uh, radical leftist social justice warriors who are suppressing um, and distorting uh, the information on uh, Wikipedia. 
Um, there are three biggest online stores, uh, Zazzle, Spreadshirt, and Cafe Press, uh, where mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, support uh, ourselves by selling merchandise relevant to our websites. Now, I create, uh, I'm also a graphic artist, so I create designs. Uh, all of these big online stores removed my designs with uh, conservative messages or anti-leftist messages or anti-Chinguara messages where I was making fun of the uh, leftist hero. Uh, we've been slandered by Snopes as a clickbait, uh, clickbait site. Uh, if you are a fact checker and you belong to a mainstream media organization and you go to Snopes you will see that our site is described as a, a clickbait site known for uh, spreading malware which is a complete lie and slander. Uh, Politifact uh, has put us on their list of fake news sites, along with uh, Gateway Pundit and Breitbart. Uh, Facebook is limiting our shares and blocks them as spam. Uh, we've been denied ad revenue due to organized uh, campaigns by uh, leftists who write to ad providers. And finally, my wife's contributions to the People's Cube have led to a forced resignation from the job. Of course, this all affected our livelihood and uh, caused us loss of income. And uh, of course, uh, a lot of people, especially libertarians, will tell us that these are all private companies and uh, they have the right to have their own rules. And uh, the conventional wisdom states that uh, uh, the real censorship comes only from the government. It's when the government does it. That's when we're censored. Otherwise, it's not. It's just private companies uh, doing what they want, and they have the right to do that. Uh, now, the Department of Defense is government. So, and if they're blocking me under a ridiculous pretense, then my comments, we have a right. So, I started digging, and uh, I turned to uh, <clears throat> to the internet and I found out that uh, actually it's not the DOD fault uh, because they were just simply using a private contractor. And the private contractor who maintained their services was uh, internet was uh, also using a database of another uh, private company who, as we're told, have the right to have their own rules and do whatever they want. But now that the uh, private companies and the government companies are merging in this, uh, then uh, the issue of censorship becomes really blurry. And that's where, uh, uh, now just to show how absurd this is, the People's Cube is uh, it's a politically uh, motivated and a uh, site, and yes, we do have an agenda. But here is uh, another example, along with me, from the same reader who reported that the People's Cube was blocked, he also reported there was a Holocaust memorial site uh, dedicated to the victims of Auschwitz that was also blocked for hate and racism on the DOD computers. So I was digging and I was kind of comparing. It helped me to find the uh, source for this when I would uh, look for both websites and I found a, a company called Bright Cloud. And it maintains, it creates and maintains a database uh, where it classifies all websites according to different categories. And some are, some categories are uh, philosophy or political activism or news or uh, entertainment. Um, but uh, my site and the Holocaust site were both under the category of hate and racism. So um, they have. Luckily, they have a, a functionality for a search, and I uh, suggest that you all find a bright cloud uh, on your computers and try to search for your own websites and see what category it belongs in. And now, um, I was able to contest that and uh, send them an email, uh, and uh, to my surprise, I got a response. And uh, they reviewed it, and uh, a few days later, they removed uh, those uh, from the, the search results. My site um, now is listed as uh, um, <coughs> a political uh, activism or something, and uh, the Holocaust site is referenced. 
So uh, it is possible. And their explanation was that uh, this was just a result of uh, uh, um, I'm just trying to find their quote. Um, the result of a uh, machine learning system uh, based on some common patterns. So that is that sounds so cool. The machine learning system misclassified me. Uh, so I was misclassified by artificial intelligence. And uh, it's like I have seen the future. And it looks like a dystopian sci-fi movie. So uh, at least the Pentagon didn't send, uh, didn't target me with a drone, and I should be great. great. <laughs> so, and, but expect those mistakes in the future, as uh, the, uh, these social media companies are, and uh, tech companies uh, starting to partner with the uh, the government to fight hate speech. Now, uh, if you oppose us taking action against this uh, tech giants now, then remember this story when uh, your own site disappears from the web. But uh, before we even do that, we must go after the hate speech classification, because the best way not to fall into the trap is to remove the trap. And what exactly is hate speech? Uh, hateful rhetoric coming from the left never gets to be branded as hate speech, as we know. Uh, nor is it ever blocked on social media. This alone makes hate speech uh, labeled meaningless and uh, exposes its one-sided agenda. Uh, so uh, it is nothing but a slur to silence conservatives. No logical argument will convince uh, these uh, hate speech police to uh, give up their, this uh, power, uh, this tool voluntarily. So we must uh, hit them with uh, uh, with the lawsuit, we must uh, do it legislatively. We must confront them, and uh, this uh, whole uh, hate speech gimmick must be outlawed as unconstitutional and an impediment to free exchange of information. Uh, and uh, I, I may be going long, so I'll just uh, I want to say that uh, an important point that just last summer the United States Supreme Court unanimously reaffirmed that uh, there is no hate speech exception in the First Amendment. Uh, this effectively renders unconstitutional any restriction of speech based on the so-called uh, hate speech allegation. And Justice Anthony Kennedy uh, wrote an explanation, and I want to quote him exactly. Uh, a law that can be directed against speech found offensive to some portion of the public can be turned against minority and dissenting views to the detriment of all. The First Amendment does not entrust that power to the government's benevolence. So the Supreme Court agrees the hate speech label is unconstitutional and a deceptive gimmick. And yet it is used to suppress conservative and libertarian speech on social uh, media and, uh, and in different organizations and including the Facebook, Google, Twitter uh, search algorithms or uh, whatever uh, code uh, exists there. So, and uh, it's also used by the speech police in many organizations, schools, and government agencies in violations of the in violation of the Constitution. Uh, again, the tech giants may be private companies, but uh, uh, we uh, information is uh, um, existential value to our society, and it cannot be treated just as uh, uh, product that they buy and sell and distribute. If it's if it has an existential value, it, it means that. So, like public square, like Pamela said, uh, we have a right to demand that we are being treated fairly. And uh, the, a good a good way to go uh, about this is through the Bureau for Consumer Protection, and uh, because their goal is to uh, protect uh, consumers from fraud. And this censorship of uh, uh, conservative speech by social media uh, giants is exactly what it is. It's fraud. It's fraudulent. If a food manufacturer were to label his products the same way as the social media does, and then present something different instead, that food manufacturer would be sued out of existence. But uh, with uh, in information companies, this is not happening. They can do whatever they want, they misrepresent. Um, now, um, if, uh, and finally, um, before conservatives are erased from the internet, legal minds in the conservative movement had better select an appropriate case of suppression. 
and uh, stage an exemplary class action lawsuit that would create a seminal precedent for all future cases. Um, and if no legal ground for such a lawsuit exists now, uh, we must work with our legislators to create it. So I couldn't address all the angles of this proposal um, here, but I uh, recently published an article in Front Page Magazine, and it's also currently at peoplescube.com. It's on the top of the uh, whole page, so you can uh, read it there. Thank you very much. Thank you all.